When it comes to market predictions, being right is not enough. It's the beginning of a new decade, so it's one of those times when we're all thinking about the future, making our predictions, and hey, if you predicted in 2010 that the time had come for decentralized money to take hold, and you acted on it by buying some Bitcoin, well, you did great. But there is one particular reason the people who bought Bitcoin early did so well. Yes, they correctly predicted something that wound up happening, but that isn't the main reason they did so well. You see, being right about Bitcoin was necessary, but not sufficient to do really great. The reason people who bought Bitcoin early became fabulously wealthy is because their prediction was not a popular one at the time. I'd like to share with you a really useful way to categorize your predictions. This is an exercise we do at Magnetic Capital called the Casper Prediction Matrix. It's a very simple but powerful technique. It involves placing your predictions into one of two buckets, consensus predictions or non-consensus predictions. Now, when it comes to making money on predictions, a lot of people think all they need to do is be right. But as I just mentioned with early Bitcoin believers, that's not enough. To do really well when placing money on a stock, a sports book, or a crypto, you not only have to be right about what you think is going to happen, you know, actually making a correct prediction, but your prediction also has to be non-consensus. That's another way of saying not popular. So what is this consensus, non-consensus stuff? Okay, consensus predictions are simply the predictions that the majority of people think are going to happen. For example, a straightforward consensus prediction in the financial sector is that the U.S. dollar will hold its strength against other major world currencies in 2020. Today, that's what the markets are betting. Another consensus prediction is that the U.S. Federal Reserve will keep interest rates at their current level or even slightly lower over the next 12 months. Now, the thing about these two consensus predictions that I just mentioned is that if you bet your money that these predictions are going to happen and if you turn out to be right, you do okay. Not great, okay. So here's the point. Making the right prediction when just about everyone else thinks the same way doesn't make you much money. It's like betting on the heavily favored football team. If lots of other money is placed on the same team, that money gets spread around to a lot of people. Following the consensus should help you avoid going off a cliff but it also puts you on the road to average. Which brings us to the more exciting and more dangerous place on the Casper prediction matrix, non-consensus predictions. This is where the action is. Non-consensus predictions are the things most people don't think are gonna happen. And that, of course, is what makes them fun. Because what if they do? I remember very well my partner's non-consensus prediction that search results ranked by how much someone paid would be a far superior way to direct traffic on the internet. So he, Bill Gross, founded GoTo.com in the Idealab Incubator in 1998. GoTo went public less than two years later with hundreds of millions of revenue. Now, there were a lot of other search engines back then, none of which were making any real money. But the venture capitalists and the technology press they thought Bill Gross's idea was awful. You can still read all the dismissive articles back then about GoTo.com. They're still out there. The fact that the Google founders stole Bill Gross's idea, that doesn't take away from the fact he made a lot of money with his non-consensus prediction about how best to rank searches. When it comes to predictions, there's only one place on the Casper prediction matrix where you make out like a bandit or like a Harvard dropout starting yet another social media site. That place is non-consensus predictions that turn out to be right. Now, I can't finish today without making a few predictions about where the cryptocurrency markets are headed. So here is one prediction, which I think follows the consensus. The third Bitcoin halving taking place in May 2020 will not have a substantial impact on the Bitcoin price. I think I can safely say that is a consensus opinion because everybody knows the halving is coming, and yet Bitcoin has been stuck in a price range of 7,000 to 10,000 for many months. I also think the reason this halving is different from the past two halvings 
is because of the Bitcoin futures markets. Those didn't exist in the last halving four years ago. My second prediction seems incredibly obvious to me, and yet I have to acknowledge it is a non-consensus prediction. Blockchain gaming, something I believe is a great use case for the blockchain, will never achieve mass market scale on Ethereum. I know up till now, video game developers building dApps have favored Ethereum, but I also know that Ethereum is simply not a viable platform to attract the consumer mass market. It's too difficult to use, too slow, too expensive. In fact, I would say this, if in three years Ethereum remains the most popular platform for blockchain games, then I can make another non-consensus prediction. Blockchain gaming will have failed to take off because it can't take off if its success depends on the Ethereum platform. I hope you give this technique a try of categorizing your predictions between consensus and non-consensus and let me know if you do, particularly your non-consensus predictions. And if you like what you heard on this video, please hit subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll talk to you next time.